Thank you for joining UWI Press and our authors for Black History Month 2012 on our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash UA Press. You can get a free chapter from each of the four books being highlighted this afternoon on our website at www.uepress.com. Also, the first three persons to write UE Press on our Facebook wall before each presentation will win a copy of one of these books. Remember to press the like button if you enjoyed the presentation. This afternoon, our authors will speak to the question, how have the experiences of the enslaved and the effect of slavery in Jamaica been reflected in their book? Please join us in welcoming Professor Hyacinth Evans as she speaks to her book, Inside Jamaican Schools. Welcome, Professor Evans. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My book is called Inside Jamaican Schools, and it aims to provide for readers an up-close look at what happens inside our schools. So the, my book is not about the enslaved persons at all. It does not address that topic, but it does address the legacy of slavery in our educational system. Many of you know that uh, slavery was abolished in the early 19th century, and uh, at that time, there were only two types of schools, the elementary school and the high school. And since that time, we have had enormous changes and developments in our educational system. Uh, we now have many different types of schools, different curricula, and so on. Tertiary education has been uh, expanded. That, those are achievements. What we are looking at today now are some of the issues and the legacies of that colonial period in our schools. So in the book, I attempt to describe some of the tensions that exist in our schools as a result of that history. It begins with a description of schools, and one of the legacies of the, po the colonial period is the different types of schools that exist in Jamaica. As I said before, we began with just two types of school, the elementary school, which was for the children of the formerly enslaved population, and the high school, which was established in the 19th century for white children. So we have developed since then, but from those two types of school to the present situation where we have about six or so types of schools. So in the first chapter of my book, I describe those schools and their history and their conditions today. And this, in fact, is one of the legacies of the colonial period. The fact that we do have a stratified society and we have a stratified educational system. The system is stratified because there are differences in the quality of education provided in each school. And the difference in the quality of our education is historically has been a result of the initial establishment, the money provided to those schools. Because, for example, in the, the high schools had a higher subvention from the Ministry of Education than, say, the all-age school, the elementary school, which was established for uh, black children. This, this difference in subvention was only eliminated in the 1990s. So you can imagine that difference in subvention to schools existed until very recently. Okay, so that is one of the things that I do do in this book. I describe the schools as we now have, and I try to give an ex explanation for the difference in the quality of the schools. I also talk about the experiences of students in the different types of schools. Now, the book is, is an ethnography. It's an eth ethnographic study of Jamaican schools, and I rely on the research that has been conducted by myself and some of my students during the 1990s and 2000, 1990s, 1990s, yes. So I rely on that research, which covers a range of 
examinations of experiences of students, of teachers, of principals, of the use of language in schools, and I present them in different chapters. After the first chapter where I describe the historical legacy, I talk about teachers and the problems they have with authority. With the students, I talk about students and their experiences coming from different backgrounds and living in different, going to school in different types of schools. I talk about the theoretical perspectives that one can use in studying schools. I also discuss the effect that different examinations have on what happens in schools because this to a great extent does have an effect on learning in schools. So basically that I cover a range of issues that are of interest to the public, I would say, but to students of education generally, to students of schooling, to students who are interested in the education system and to what happens in schools today. I am, I've, there is another chapter that looks at the use of the Creole in schools and the challenges that many teachers and students have in using standard Jamaican English in schools. That is an interesting chapter. In that book, I also look at gender in schools because I drew from the research that I had conducted in the 1990s and other research in, the, in Jamaica and the Caribbean on what happens to boys and girls in schools. I look at the treatment of girls and boys by teachers, male and female, in schools and how students respond to this kind of treatment. And I place all of this in a historical perspective. Basically, what I try to do in this book is to examine what happens in school and to place everything in a historical and sociological perspective, providing a sociological view on what is going on in schools today. Thank you, Professor Evans, for sharing with us today. Viewers, stay tuned as our final author will be Professor Horace Levy, and he will be presenting on the African-Caribbean worldview. Thank you once again.